Hey, this is Scott with Hawaii Jet Boat Adventures, and this is episode 16, five cheap but very useful accessories that I found for my boat. I'm gonna list them here from low to high in cost, and we're gonna talk about each one of them and give some demonstration videos for each installation. So the first one we're gonna talk about is a line caddy. Line caddy is about $7 plus tax. If you're like me, you've got lines all over the boat. You've got your bow line, your stern line, some dock lines, and they just go, they have to go somewhere. And on a 19 foot boat, there's not a lot of room. So I usually pile them in that corner there. But this was my solution. I was tired of seeing them all over the floor. These are called utility hangers, $7 plus tax. You're going to need some hardware, some stainless steel hardware. And this hardware is not going to be the type that has a nut on the back because you can't get your hands back there. You may even want to use 5200 to lock the screws in place. This is the normal area where all my lines get stored once I take them uh, out of the bow and out of the stern and get them out of the way. Right here I'm kind of eyeballing where I'm going to put these, how much room do I need, how long can my coils be. I really didn't want the coils to hang down too low so I positioned each one of the hangers at a, at a height that was perfect. Of course I leveled the boat and put on knee pads to do all this work. Crawling around without the knee pads is painful. So I put the first one in, figured about how far away from that handle I needed it to be, and then just started eyeballing things and then kind of got them on level with each other. Remember you're going to have to get some good stainless steel hardware. Once you get it all together, you're going to get your little paracord rope threaded through there. Here's the finished installation. Everything is spaced properly and hanging nicely. I highly recommend this project. This next project is probably something that is unique to my situation here in Hawaii where we have to move our fenders from one side of the boat to the other for a variety of different reasons. And a lot of times that can be a pain in the butt because you've got everything knotted to the right height or right depth hanging and now you've got to take everything off and move to the other side of the boat so you can get the boat in the water. This is usually brought on by somebody who hasn't got his act together in the parking lot and is now trying to do all his staging at the boat ramp holding everybody up. The cleat appears to be chrome plated. No hardware comes with this and as you're going to see here in a moment this is how it works. I'm going to thread this line through and it actually has teeth and it holds everything nice and secure. Now to install you're going to you have to search under or I should say up the side of the bow under the storage area to make sure you don't hit anything and you can put a nut and washer on the back side of this and screw everything down tight. So here I've put up my pencil marks, I've drilled one of the holes. This time I didn't have any blue tape, I ran out. Remember, don't go too far through because right beyond this hole is the actual outer hull. And this is the finished installation. You can see the fender line coming through. It wraps quickly around. And you can see at the top, there is a low, a low fender. This next project didn't cost me anything. I have flash drives all over the place. I had a spare one in a desk drawer that I think might have even been a disposable type. So it didn't cost anything. But what do you use a flash drive for? I'll tell you. The OEM stereo system on a 2017 SX190 is a product made by ASA Electronics. It's a good looking radio. It's clean. It doesn't have any knobs to touch and rotate and get nasty. It's connected up uh, to four matching speakers throughout the boat. You connect to the radio via your smartphone and an application that you downloaded off the ASA website. And that's where the fun begins. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention that there is a 12 volt plug for plugging in accessories, like an air pump for blowing up the inflatables. There's also a USB charging port, which I use to uh, charge up my cell phone and um, I think some, some cameras. But the app interface and the connection by Bluetooth gives me all kinds of problems. Almost every other weekend there's a problem. The app doesn't always pair up. It's very hard to see in bright uh, daylight and the icons are so small and they're not on the same page that it's just a pain. Well then, what are my solutions? Number one, I could just suck it up, deal with the situation when it doesn't work, what well, does it pair, can't listen to, the, to my music, I'll listen to the radio. I guess the second one would be to junk the existing radio that's on it, buy a new one and make sure this one has a better interface. Three, of course, do the right thing. Read the owner's manual from Yamaha. This is what I actually ended up doing on a, on a day off. 
and I found out that the USB charging point port is actually an interface to the stereo. It's not just for charging. So using USB, you can download all your music to a flash drive and you can even put the music in different folders. I've got different folders for different style of music. Plug it in. Wait for the radio to pick it up. You're golden. You can use the keys. You can see the five and the six number down there on the right hand side of your screen. Those are your up folder, down folder. There you go. Problem solved. Everyone should have this on board their own boat. Number four is my boat hook, the extendable unit for around $40. I can't tell you how much I use the boat hook. It's so helpful to not have to reach out into the water to grab something, to push yourself away from something, to bring yourself into something. It's just, it's always being used. This is a 36 to 84 inch retractable. Uh, to install this, you're going to need, if you want to do it nicely and you can put it in your ski locker down the center of the boat, you're going to need these J hooks. I got them from the big box store and they're just a couple of bucks. Two screws, you're going to need to get the hardware as well. It doesn't come with the hardware. And you're going to install them in an area that's the ski locker down the center of the boat underneath your uh, running lights, your navigation lights. That's that hole there. Two screws, get in there, measure it so it's nice. Measure that cleanly uh, down from the, the back, the black bumper. Line them up, get them set up, screw them in. Of course, you're going to get coarse threads and lock tight them in there with some 5200. Make sure you do it nicely. You don't want them all skewed. This last accessory that I cannot do without is my low freeboard boat fenders. I have two, one at the bow and one at the stern. This has come from lots of trial and error with different fenders, different materials, different shapes. These work for my given application. And as you're going to see here in a moment, the docks and the piers that we have to deal with out here in Hawaii are poorly maintained, dangerous, and these boats with low freeboard can actually at low tide go underneath and be horribly scratched and damaged by the concrete that they're sliding underneath here. You're going to see here in a moment, here is a launch over a sand island. And a lot of them look just like this on different parts of the island. The ramps look like this. They weren't made for our kinds of boats. And you can actually see during low tide, my boat would go underneath it. And it has, and it's been scratched. Here's another episode, another instance. And here's where I have them. I have them positioned about right there. I've got it tied off. And it won't move because of that grip tape right there. And I've got one up at the front as well. And you'll notice the one at the front is tied and it's using that easy cleat right over the top of a handhold because the handhold actually gets it higher than the actual boat the gunnel is. So if we slide under it, it's even got a little higher reach. Anyway, these are absolutely um, necessary for, for my use and maybe they can help you out as well. All right, so let's recap. We've got the line caddies, the easy cleats, the USB flash drive, the boat hook, and my low freeboard fenders. Everything here I use every day. So this episode is all pal. Hope you enjoyed watching it. Hopefully it'll trigger some uh, ideas that you have for your own boat. I wish you all well. We'll see you at the next video. This is Scott, Hawaii Jet Boat Adventures. Aloha.